Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the fall 2021 Austin Community College commencement exercises. Please remain standing for the national anthem. Please be seated. Congratulations, graduates. 
You've done it. As Chancellor of ACC, it is my distinct honor to celebrate your achievements. College is challenging during normal times, but these past 18 months have tested even the strongest of students. Despite the fears and uncertainty surrounding the global pandemic, you have persevered and earned the respect of the ACC community, your family, and your friends. I wish you health in all facets of your life, from relationships with your family and friends to your newfound career. I wish you bold adventures that will take you further than you can imagine. Take every opportunity and grow with each moment. Use this moment, your day of graduation, and make a promise to yourself that you will always strive to reach new heights. You have been building toward this moment for years. Don't let up now. Take this momentum and keep going. Your college promises to support you in every way that we can. I want you to realize how connected we all are. Embrace your connections to ACC. You are a river bat, and we are a mighty community. Here in Central Texas, you will find more people connected to your college than you even realize. Seek those connections, engage with others, learn from others, and share your own wisdom. Together, we will build a stronger, more unified community. It starts at your alma mater, it starts at ACC. Graduates, I hope you realize just how remarkable you are for all you have accomplished. This moment can feel overwhelming. It's the culmination of years of work and dedication. I encourage you to take a moment to pause and reflect upon your college journey. We have all watched you sacrifice and persist. We have watched you grow and achieve. Take a moment to embrace this and celebrate yourself. Graduates of 2020 and 2021, we are encouraged by you. We admire your perseverance and we are so very proud of you. It is my pleasure to introduce the Board of Trustees and platform guests. With us tonight, Nicole Eversman, Secretary of the Board of Trustees, Gigi Edwards Bryant, trustee. Dr. Barbara Mink, trustee. Other platform guests include tonight's commencement speakers, Pete and Tommy Winstead. Dr. Monique Humphrey, provost, executive vice chancellor of academic and student affairs. Dr. Molly Beth Malcolm, Executive Vice Chancellor of Operations and Public Affairs. Neil Vickers, Executive Vice Chancellor of Finance and Administration. Mike Midgley, Vice Chancellor of Instruction. Dr. Shasta Buchanan, Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs. Dr. Mary Harris, Vice Chancellor of Institutional Effectiveness and Grant Development. Dr. Samantha Croft, President of the Full-Time Faculty Senate and tonight's ceremonial mace bearer. Don Morris, President of the Adjunct Faculty Association. Marco Vasquez, President of the Student Government Association. And Linda Terry, Executive Dean of Admissions, Enrollment, and Completion. Also present with us are Matthew Campbell, President of the ACC Classified Employees Association, and Samantha Akers, President of the ACC Association of Professional Technical Employees. <laughs> Students throughout your academic career, you have been guided and mentored by our faculty. I would like to acknowledge the members of the ACC faculty here tonight Please stand and be recognized. I would also like to acknowledge the administrative team and other staff here with us this evening. Please stand and be recognized.
Please welcome Dr. Samantha Croft, President of the ACC Full-Time Faculty Senate. She will be followed by Marco Vasquez, President of the Student Government Association. Welcome graduates and those who are here to celebrate our graduates. Graduates, if you will indulge me for a moment, please close your eyes. No, really, close your eyes. Thanks. Okay. Then, take a deep breath. Quiet your mind for a moment. Now, as you slowly open your eyes, take a mental picture of this moment in time. What you see, what you hear, what you're feeling. Today, you are champions. You bested every obstacle, you ignored every distraction, and you conquered every excuse that would have prevented you from sitting where you are today. You are victorious. No matter what happened in your past, you are here now. When challenges come in the future, remember back to this moment and know that you are strong, you are capable, and you can persevere. On behalf of all of the faculty at ACC, I extend a sincere congratulations. We are so very proud of you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Marco Vasquez, and I currently represent all of you students as the Student Government Association president. Take a deep breath in, nice and slow. Now exhale. This is your moment. You all brought yourselves here through all your trials and tribulations, individual, family, work, school, and all the commitments in between that. Be proud of yourselves in this moment because no one else could have done it the same way you did. On behalf of the Student Government Association, thank you for putting in the hard work to get yourselves here. We wish you health in your next upcoming moments, and we wish you prosperity in your next future endeavors. But today is your day, and relish in that as much as you can. Congratulations. Thank you, Samantha and Marco. Community colleges now enroll more than half of all public higher education students. Not only are we the gateway to higher education and training, but our students perform as well or better than students who begin at four-year colleges and universities. That's a testament to the quality of our faculty, our staff, our programs, and our support services. ACC also has several exceptional programs for developing student leadership. Phi Theta Kappa is a national honor society that recognizes community college students who excel in their academic and community endeavors. The ACC Student Government Association is a voice of the student body. It provides an important link between students and ACC administration. SGA members work to improve the quality and value of the educational experience by acting as advocates for all students. ACC recognizes the graduating students who have been a part of these leadership programs. Would the students who have been inducted into Phi Theta Kappa or have served as SGA officers please stand and be recognized? Thank you. It is my pleasure to recognize Jessica Maraquin as the recipient of the Fall 2021 Chancellor's Student Achievement Award. <laughs> Jessica came to the United States when she was 16 years old and immediately entered the workforce. She did not have a high school diploma or speak English, but always had a dream of attending college. At 19, when her first daughter was born, she knew that it was time. 
Jessica began her educational journey by taking English as a second language classes in 2010 at ACC. While completing these classes, she learned about ACC's GED program and went on to obtain her high school equivalency certificate. While still learning English, she then began taking ACC courses that are offered in Spanish and completed these general education classes in 2014. As we know, ACC students are resilient and persistent. Even when Jessica paused her enrollment to pursue family endeavors, she continued to practice her English and became involved at the nonprofit Todos Juntos Learning Center. There she learned about ACC's college prep program. This program geared her toward her next life adventure, officially enrolling in college. With her refined English skills, newfound confidence, and numerous mentors and supporters, she began her degree program. However, being a mother new to the country and a non-traditional student, her higher education journey also had obstacles. She received scholarships from the ACC Foundation and from Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. These financial awards helped Jessica achieve her goal of graduating completely debt-free. Today, today, we are honoring a student who excelled beyond the classroom. She found community and a sense of belonging by being involved in student organizations, community relations, and co-curricular activities. Here is a quote from Jessica. Quote, I am sure many of you here tonight graduating with me have had to be creative and resilient to overcome the obstacles between you and your goal. We are here tonight because we belong, because we decided to achieve. In spite of the hard circumstances, we kept moving forward. When I think about how long it took me to earn my degree, I do not feel ashamed. I feel proud for having been persistent because time does not matter if we are moving forward. I accomplished my goal in my time. We all move at our own pace, and we will all flourish at our own time. Fellow graduates, remember that we all have our own stories. My story may be the one being shared tonight, but I know that your journey is also full of lessons worth sharing. So do not compare ourselves to anyone. Instead, let's keep working hard, being persistent, looking for support. Let's keep going, because moving forward, even slowly, will never take us backward. Please join me in congratulating the Fall 2021 Chancellor's Achievement Award recipient, Jessica Mara Quinn. Jessica, please stand and be recognized. We really thank you, Jessica. That's a strong story that represents the students that we have here at ACC. ACC is paying special tribute to someone special graduates tonight. Here to continue this tradition is Dr. Mary Harris, Vice Chancellor of Institutional Effectiveness and Grant Development. Upon graduation from the University of Dayton, Dr. Harris was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Army Adjutant General Corps and received the Distinguished Military Graduate Award. She spent five years as a personnel manager in the Army Training Support Center, the Army Transportation Group, and the Army Broadcasting Company. As a reservist, Mary helped establish the Army Family Team Building Program, a training program for military spouses. Her last position was as the commander of an Army Public Affairs Unit in San Antonio. While there, Mary led a team of journalists and broadcasters in El Salvador, reporting on the Army's humanitarian projects. Please welcome Dr. Mary Harris. Thank you, Dr. Rhodes. 
I would like, good evening everyone. First, I would like all of our students who are service members or veterans to please stand up so we can take a look at you. Come on, stand up. Congratulations. Are you feeling proud of yourself tonight? Because we are very proud of you. Oh, yeah. As you were, go ahead and have a seat. Thank you. <clears throat> Do you remember what led you to join the military? Was it family? Tradition? You joined because a friend was joining? You wanted to make a change? You felt a duty to serve your country? Or you wanted a new adventure? Whatever it was, you knew it would change your life. And also, do you remember when you were sworn in? When you raised your hand and you agreed to serve, to support, and defend? You said, yes, I want to be a part of this. I want to learn something new. I want to give back. I want to serve my country in a big way. I want to do great things. Then there was your training. Ooh. Do you remember the O oh, Dark 30 in the morning runs, breaking in your combat boots, mess hall food, sleeping in a tent, remembering to say yes sir, yes ma'am, yes sergeant, and of hurry up and waits. How about arriving at your first duty station or your first deployment or being away from friends and family? Also think about the support you had during that time possibly family, your fellow service members and veterans, the sergeant, the officers, and all the systems in place to make you a success. All of these memories are based on that key decision you made to join the military. My memory of the military starts as a child. My father enlisted in the Army as a cook. I remember holiday meals in the mess hall. I remember living on post and going to military schools. I remember my father retiring and deciding to attend Burlington County Community College in New Jersey on the GI Bill. And after obtaining his associate's degree, he transferred to Trenton State College to receive his bachelor's degree. I remember my parents promising my six siblings and me a college education. And they delivered on that promise. And I remember me deciding to follow in the footsteps of three of my brothers to join the military through ROTC. I remember how my father's military service and education was transformative in so many ways for our family. Just like my father and our family, I'm sure it has been a transformation for you. My military friends, tonight is another memory that you will hold on and cherish. The memory of deciding to attend college and of persisting to completion. You have reached a great milestone in your educational journey. As a daughter of a veteran, the sister of veterans, the widow of a veteran, and a veteran myself, it gives me great honor to pay tribute to you, our graduating service members and veterans. Within this graduating class, we are proud to have service members and veterans who made the transition from the military to the classroom. And I'm sure you remember this transition was not always easy. But at ACC, there is a network of support that was dedicated and committed to help you reach your academic and professional goals. As a college, we want to collectively acknowledge you for your academic focus and achievements, and thank you for your service to this country. Thank you. At ACC, we are showing our appreciation to you, our graduating service members and veterans, with this symbolic medallion. Not only is this medallion a recognition of your contribution to our country, it also represents the special achievement you've earned while on your academic journey. A job well done. We are all very proud of you. At this time, I would ask you all to stand up again, our graduating service members and veterans, to please stand again.
I would also like to ask the family members and friends of our graduating service members and veterans to stand. That's right. Thank you for your love and support during their military service and as an ACC student. Finally, everybody stay standing. Finally, I would like to ask all the ACC faculty and staff who are service members and veterans to please stand. <laughs> to all of you, on behalf of Austin Community College, thank you for your service. We are all proud of your accomplishments as a veteran and also as a river bat. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Now I have the pleasure of introducing a pair who have devoted their lives to serving the people of Greater Austin Community, our keynote speakers, Pete and Tommy Winstead. Pete and Tommy together serve our community in everything from civic and political to philanthropic matters. Pete is the founding shareholder of Winstead PC, he spent his early professional career in the field of federal taxation and later served early stage and startup companies to provide mentoring on financial backing. Pete was appointed by Governor Bush to be the first chair of the Texas Turnpike Authority and has chaired numerous boards in our community. Tommy has served on the advisory boards of Chewy's Children Giving to Children Parade, the Palmer Drug Abuse Program, and Austin PBS. She has also served on a new number of boards to support those in need. In recognition of their contributions, the Boy Scouts of America awarded them the Distinguished Citizens Award, marking history as the first couple to receive the recognition. They are an inspiration to all of us. Please join me in welcoming Pete and Tommy Winstead. I'm Tommy Winstead, my husband Pete. This is such an exciting moment here at Austin Community College. Graduation is just the beginning. That's why they call it commencement. We welcome those of you who previously graduated in 2020 and 2021 to virtual commencements. On this special day, I have just one word for you. Congratulations. Don't worry, I'll have a few more words later, but first I'll ask Pete to speak. Thank you. As Tommy said, this is just the beginning for each of you. From here, you will each go your separate paths. You might go on to higher education because the credits here will get you credit there. You might go on to work for Tesla or Oracle headquartered here in Austin. Somebody in Oregon or Georgia one day might call you on a phone that Samsung has developed. Your opportunities are great. Uh, this is the power of your education, and this is the power of your education. Don't waste it. Education opens doors, it truly does. If you ask me what is the American dream, I will tell you that it starts with education. This is a country where anybody can make it if they work hard and they work smart. But not everybody has a chance at an education. Here at ACC, you got that chance. Some of you never finished high school, yet here you are. Here at ACC, you got the second chance. Bravo for coming back. Bravo for taking that second chance. So many people fear that the American dream is slipping away. They're grasping for answers. They're searching for a path forward. Well, ACC is building that path. This is it, right here. You are the future. And a thank you here to all the family members here. It might not have been easy for you to support your son or daughter or husband or wife through this, but this is a huge investment in the person you love. Your part in all of this is an act of love. Graduates, can I have a big thank you to your family on three? One, two, three, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> uh, 
to to the graduates, it, it's not. It's, <laughs> it's it's now up to you. You have the education. You've sacrificed for it. You've worked for it, and now it's yours. What are you going to do with it? I don't mean tomorrow or next week. I'm sure you have plans already for the next few months or even years. But there's a whole life to live and a whole country, indeed a whole world to explore. Don't be afraid to step through the doors of future opportunities. Don't be afraid to innovate. Don't be afraid to take risks. Follow your paths as far as they take you, but never feel like you're stuck in that, in that path. On October 4, 1957, the Russians launched the Sputnik, the first satellite of planet Earth. In response, the world determined that Pete Winstead had to be an engineer. When I started college, my math professor from MIT, he spoke analytic and calculus. I did not. I don't know how many of you have had to come face to face with that kind of brick wall. It was surprising and disappointing, but undeterred, I stepped through the political science door to a legal career that's been extremely rewarding. One of those rewards came while serving in the tax division, I emphasize that, of the Department of Justice for four years. The Attorney General, however, had a different idea. He had the unexpected opportunity for me to spend the summer with the Civil Rights Division in Selma, Alabama. That was the following the famous march for voting rights on the Norman Pettus Bridge in 1965. I saw that racial bias up close and personal. I learned from that experience. I wouldn't trade it for the world and the people that I encountered in Selma, Alabama. During the savings and loan, Texas savings and loan crisis of 1986, I got another unexpected opportunity to leave the comfort of my Dallas office and open a branch office in Austin for the law firm. People thought I was crazy to undertake such a risky choice at that time. As luck would have it, I met a 22-year-old college dropout. You might th not think it's lucky to meet a dropout. Some people thought he was crazy too. He had this strange vision of selling personal computers over the internet. That was 1988. Who owned a PC back then? Who had ever heard of the internet? This 22-year-old college dropout wanted to sell something nobody was using over this internet thing that nobody knew about. Does that sound legit? Well, this 22-year-old college dropout was Michael Dell, and we all know the rest of that story. Dell took advantage of the ever-changing commoditization and the lowering prices for computer components while other people's products sat on the shelves for months out of date. My unexpected opportunity in all, in all of this was to handle the initial public offering or IPO for Dell in 1988. This in turn created great opportunities and expo exposure in the central Texas business community. It was part of the diversification of the Texas economy from oil and gas and cattle into the technology world we see today. The bad news, is, bad news is I took my legal fee in cash, not risky Dell stock, so I'm still working by the hour. And by the way, back then, HEB was not selling groceries for stock, so I had to do it. You might see your, your, your four path clear today, but your best opportunities may come at you in the most unexpected ways, so, you don't, so don't be afraid. And here's another don't for you. Don't forget to give back to the community. So many of you have been given a chance others never had. So many of you have been given a second chance you didn't have earlier. So many of you have been given a chance here at ACC that you would not, could not have found elsewhere. You've been given a unique chance to help others follow in your footsteps. Indeed, you have an obligation to pay it forward. And I don't use the word obligation lightly. I'd like to pass it over to Tommy now. She's not only the wind beneath my wings, but a shining example of paying it forward in Central Texas in so many community projects here. Thank you, Sugar. Once again, I say congratulations. You've earned your degree. You made it, and that is a huge accomplishment. But what is this it? As Pete said, your path might take you in many unexpected directions but one part of each of our paths should always be to give back, to help build our communities and to help those in need. Some people think you have to be wealthy to be charitable. Nothing could be further from the truth. 
Every charity needs people. They need your hands, your brains, your heart, not just your wallet. And when asked, don't be afraid to say yes. I was asked to join boards. I was asked to chair fundraising events. I was asked to chair a multi-million dollar capital campaign. I felt like they really wanted Pete. I assumed they approached me knowing he would then be a part of the organization when I said yes. I discovered some of the most rewarding things I've achieved in my life, outside of my family, of course. Don't be afraid to fail. Failures teach you how to succeed, and they also make you stronger. Some people also think that charitable organizations are filled with stuffy older people like us. Again, nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, many of these organizations have groups of younger people that they cultivate of all ages to later become board members or get involved in fundraising events. They want people like you, people who show initiative, people who have drive, people who care. Find the causes that motivate you and, bu and become a part of their mission. You have seen firsthand through ACC the importance of organizations that help those who are in need. This is how you can get involved. This is how to become a part of causes that you believe in and want to support. It will bring you great joy and satisfaction. I worked on the campaign to relocate the KLRU public television station to the ACC Highland campus. I was so excited the day of the, of the groundbreaking because of some of the remarkable students that I met that day. I saw how excited they were to have the studio right next to their classrooms. I was humbled and grateful to be a small part of that success story. Another one of my favorites has been working with Ronald McDonald House. I've volunteered in some form or another since 1993. I served on the board and I chaired that board. And in 2005, I co-chaired the capital campaign to build the new Ronald McDonald House on the Dell Children's Hospital campus. Pete and I donated to that campaign and in doing so, we named a room in memory of our son, Joey. You see, every story of giving is an act of love, but some can be more personal than others. There are hundreds, even thousands of beautiful stories of generosity and community right here in Austin. Waiting for you, those stories are part of the American dream, giving everyone a chance to succeed. But those stories have not been written yet. They're waiting for you to write them. And now Pete has some closing remarks for you, and I promise I won't let him go on too much longer. <laughs> She's cutting me off, as you can tell. <laughs> the other huge benefit you'll find when you give back is that you meet so many other people like you, people who believe, people who get things done, high achievers who care about what they're doing and who don't just channel surf through life. These civic relationships and other, with other high achievers will hold you in good stead, both personally and professionally. Thomas, in my time speaking here, is coming to an end, but your time in Austin or wherever your wings might take you is just beginning, and who knows where that will lead. That will lead. As a former Secretary of State once told me, hunt where the ducks are, or maybe hunt where the river bats fly. The river bats are here in this room. Let me close by saying how lucky you are to be associated with and graduating from Austin Community College. ACC has assumed a major leadership role in the education space, particularly in training people for technology, law enforcement, and radio and television careers. Please remember to support ACC as your own success moves forward. Thank you from Tommy and me for this opportunity to be with you on this very important day in your lives. When one reaches our age, we draw inspiration from younger people. With five children and 10 grandchildren, we're heavily invested in the future. You are the American dream, and we know the future is in good hands with you. We salute your success and wish you the best of luck going forward. Thank you.
can stay up here. Okay. Okay. Thank you both for inspiring words and support. You've been friends and supporters of ACC over the years, and it's an honor to have you join us for this year's commencement. We would like to present you with the award of Honorary Associate of De Degree at Austin Community College, and it reads as follows. Be it known that Pete and Tommy Winstead, for their distinguished service and dedicated friendship to the Austin Community College District, are hereby awarded the degree of Honorary Associate of Arts and are entitled to all the rights, privileges, and honors appertaining to that recognition. In testimony thereof, the Board of Trustees has granted this honorary diploma bearing the seal of the college done this 13th day of December, 2021. I would now like for the Board Secretary, Nicole Eversman, to come up and present you with the diploma and the specially designed stole as an honorary graduate of Austin Community College. The stole was designed and produced by the ACC Fashion Incubator. Thank you, Nina Means and the Fashion Incubator team. Now, along with the honorary associate degree, Austin Community College is designating $25,000 for the ACC Foundation Endowment Fund to create the Pete and Tommy Winstead Endowed Scholarship. This will allow students for generations to come to benefit from your legacy as supporters of higher education and help to strengthen our region by investing in our future workforce. Pete and Tommy, we value your friendship we thank you for your service to our nation, our state, our community, and especially our college. We truly value you as a member of the Austin Community College family. To ACC, you are the newest river bats. <laughs> It's time now to focus our attention on tonight's heroes, our fall 2021 and 2020 graduating classes joined by some earlier graduates who have not been able to attend an in-person ceremony since spring of 2020. We begin our recognition program with Mr. Mike Midgley, Vice Chancellor of Instruction. Dr. Rhodes, on behalf of the faculty of Austin Community College, I certify that persons listed in the official program have completed the requirements for their degrees and certificates. Chancellor Rhodes, Board of Trustees, I would like to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Would those candidates please stand? On the recommendation of the faculty, and the authority vested in me by the State of Texas and the ACC Board of Trustees, we confer on each of you the Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree. Please be seated. Chancellor Rhodes, Board of Trustees, I would like to present the candidates for the degree of Associates of Arts. Please stand. <laughs> On the recommendation of the faculty and the authority vested in me by the State of Texas and the ACC Board of Trustees, we confer on each of you the degree of Associate of Arts. Chancellor Rhodes, Board of Trustees, I would like to present the candidates for the degree of Associate of Science. Please stand.
On the recommendation of the faculty and the authority vested in me by the State of Texas and the ACC Board of Trustees, we confer on each of you the degree of Associate of Science. Chancellor Rhodes, Board of Trustees, I would like to present the candidates for the degree of Associate of Applied Science. Please stand. <laughs> On the recommendation of the faculty and the authority vested in me by the State of Texas and the ACC Board of Trustees, we confer on each of you the degree of Associate of Applied Science. Chancellor Rhodes, Board of Trustees, I would like to present the candidates for the Certificate of Completion. Please stand. On the recommendation of the faculty and the authority vested in me by the State of Texas and the ACC Board of Trustees, we confer on each of you the Certificate of Completion. Chancellor Rhodes, Board of Trustees, I would like to present the candidates for the High School Equivalency Diploma. Please stand. <laughs> On the recommendation of the faculty and the authority vested in me by the State of Texas and the ACC Board of Trustees, we confer on each of you the High School Equivalency Diploma. Will all of the graduates please stand? You may now move your tassels. Please be seated. At this time, Linda Terry, Executive Dean of Admissions, Enrollment, and Completion, will present the graduates. Will the graduates please stand and come forward? Benet J. Saavedra. Bess J. Coyle Irwin. Jacqueline Gonzalez. Claudia Harris. Beulah Hernandez. Christian A. Hernandez. Geneva S. Houston. Mary J. Tillman. Ozini Clo R. Franklin. Julie Ann Gafford. Shauna Hernandez. Elizabeth Ospinal. Mariela Torres. Jazz M. Webster.
Marcia Mazuko. Barbara D. Salazar. Serena Berg. Mahube Baez. Chandra Monet. Lane Dechelle Jackson. Destiny Star McCoy. Yoldus Makomadiva. Andrena Perez. Matthew A. Rocha. Ronnie Irene Richter. Tiffany Thomas. Jeremy Tristan Lopez. Koriai Polat. Erica Guardado. Mighty Silva Juarez. Myra G. Lopez. Victoria E. Martinez. Cynthia Alvarez. And Chelsea Michelle Solis. Congratulations, Riverbats. After listening to the names of our graduates, I am reminded of the true multicultural heritage of our students. With that in mind, let me say to them, congratulations, Gang Shi, Felicidades, Pazdrav Liam, Bodhai, Chuka Hamida, and As we congratulate our new graduates, I would also like to recognize those that have supported our graduates. So could I have the children of the graduates please stand? Could the spouses and partners of the graduates please stand? Could the parents and grandparents of the graduates please stand? Could the brothers, sisters, and relatives and friends of the graduates please stand? Please join me in congratulating the graduates. Graduates, you're all now ACC alumni, and we welcome you to join the ACC Alumni Association. You'll be receiving information about the association's services, events, and opportunities in the coming weeks. A special thanks to the Capital of Texas Brass Ensemble 
and to tonight's interpreters for providing the sign language interpreting for the deaf. This concludes our ceremony. Audience, please remain seated until the recessional ends. There will be a reception in the east entrance concourse immediately following the ceremony. Thank you. Have a great weekend.